I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm hearing through the grapevine. I'm like, what's happening with these characters? What's gonna happen? And I talk to people and I'm like, so what'd you, what'd you shoot that day? Like, what'd you, what'd you shoot? Like, what? Like, what's coming out of the pipe, man? Like, and they're like, yo, man, it's gonna be crazy. I'm like, yeah, like crazier than like crazier than I'm like, oh shit, it's gonna be crazy. That's how I feel. I'm like, yeah. So I'm, I'm just really, that's all. I, I'm really excited. I'm excited. I'm Max, and we are about to talk about P Valley season two, which has been so addictive to watch. Oh my god, so much drama. I wanted to kind of recap everything we've kind of seen as, ahead of the three finale episodes, and I thought it would be really nice to do it with one of the cast members. He's had such a big storyline. His name is John Clarence Stewart. He plays Big T. Welcome to Flip Your Wig. John, talk to me about this journey that you've gone on with this character. It's just been incredible. This is my first time doing a show that is so. Uh, its target audience is the black community, and it's my first time in a show like that. And I, and I, because of that, I take it so so seriously. And I know, I know characters like Teak, like Murder. I know characters like Autumn. I know characters like Sadie's. I know characters like Sippy. I know characters like all these people. Um, and I felt like uh, called to be a part of it. And now, mind you, you know, I, when I was cast in the show and even before that, had some conversations with Katori and Patrick and Ian, some of the producers and Nicole, and they just shared with me. They were like, hey, sometimes there, there's, you don't know what you're gonna get. You don't know what you're gonna get back from the audience and stuff like that. But these are the reasons that we're telling the story. You know, we're, we're, we're intentionally telling the stories that are not being told. We're holding a mirror up, as Katori would say, uh, holding a mirror up to society. And in doing so, I think when you hold a mirror up to yourself, you get to see all the flaws and the imperfections and all these different things. That's the whole point of it. Yeah. If, and, and also the point of art and the point of storytelling, if it's not divisive, if it doesn't stir something up in you, then why are we doing it? I totally agree, absolutely. Um, listen, that finale episode for Big Teak, your character and the journey that he goes on, um, it was a lot and the reaction on social media especially twitter because you and i follow each other i could see how it was enormous was it nuts and was it a lot of people coming at you i was floored i was i didn't know i didn't i didn't know what to i didn't i still don't quite know what to i, I i'm inside of it i don't quite under i it feels fun and i knew that in doing that scene we were doing something that was really really important and uh, Katori knew that as well. So Nicole and Ian and Patrick, we all knew that. And over, you know, folks that saw the episodes, you know, Nico or, yeah, Nico would come up and be like, are you ready? Folks would come up and they'd be like, are you ready? And I was just like, ready for what? I mean, I did the work. I, it's, I can't do anything about it now. It lives where it lives and I have to release it. And I've done my, my process of kind of shedding teeth you know which is you know which is which includes for me some therapy some work some different things to like release but i felt in looking at my twitter like we that we did our jobs that we did what we sought out to do which was to tell the truth I think when we tell the truth and we tell us one person's very specific, very individual truth, it becomes universal. Um, that is the crux of storytelling, to have the courage to get into the guts of an individual in a space, in a time, because in doing so, everyone can see shades of themselves. It's so overwhelming as well. Like when you're watching it, you get so invested in these characters. That car scene between you and Little Murder, um, I just was like, Little Murder, save him, Little Murder, save him. And I was so upset with him. And I know everybody has different perspectives, but we all get so invested in these TV shows. Absolutely. I think that the thing that's so interesting is like, and this is the, the gold about television specifically, right? But television, you, you, you're inviting characters into your home. They do become part of your life and part of your family in some ways. You watch them with your loved ones, you talk about what they've done, and especially with the, the format that um, Pea Valley has taken when you're doing these weekly releases, people get to talk and they get to share in the way that you know TV has always done. And to your point, everyone's experience of that scene is very different. You know, it's, you know, there are, I have read it, people who, um, have been upset with Teak because, you know, 
murder's there and if the person's right there, why could you, how could you? And, you know, I understand that. I understand that uh, frustration with teeth. I understand that frustration. I also understand that there can be a whole lot of truths existing in the same space. And it's, you know, from Teek's perspective, um, moving through the day, he knew he was going to do it. Oh. Like, he knew he was going to do it. He made the he decision. Knew that whole, well, obviously you read this quick, but it's just like, in your mind, it was already set that this dude is having his last day. Yeah, yeah. That like he started the day and like you get to see as the as the day unfolds, you kind of if you watch the episode back, you get to see his plan and how Murda kind of changes his plan. Like he was going to drop off Murda so many different times, but Murda kept changing the plan because he wouldn't leave. And because of that, the day became magical. Because of that, the day became something that he couldn't meet. He couldn't, it was the the best day that he could have lived. And he, he experienced that. Mm -hmm. And so like in that you get to, you know, they have the, the, the scene at the wing shot, you have the song dropping, you have all of these things that he would not have experienced. And all of these things that, you know, for, for Teek, I, 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 I think he's, there's a, um, and Katoria and, and the team talked about this as well. There's such a, there's a spiritual element to the show as well. And I think that Teek, you know, there's so many different things that happen that are confirmation to Teek that it's time. You know, when he sees Murda and he sees how, and he had the conversation about how Murda feels about Cliff and like what that relationship is, there is something inside of Teek that it hurts. It definitely hurts. And there's also this thing inside of Teek that's like, he's gonna be okay. Like there is someone that is going to take care of them. It was just so emotional to watch and the relationship between your character Big Teak and Little Murder, the chemistry between you and Jay Alphonse was just incredible this season and without it this wouldn't have worked. Now you know Jay Alphonse from before don't you? You guys are already aware of each other? It's, it's all rooted in respect, right? It's rooted in respect. We know each other. I have respect for his work. He has respect for my work from back in the day, right? So I remember, but I remember my first day on set, I was walking by to my trailer and he saw me and he was like, yo. And I was like, yo, and he dapped it up outside. And um, he brought me into the hair and makeup trailer. He was like, this is John, boom. And he introduced me to everybody. That kind of energy, that's really, really important. Specifically when you're talking about someone that's supposed to come into a family that already exists, right? It's, it kind of sets a tone. And I received that kind of energy from everybody on set, right? Um, just everyone was so welcoming. And everyone knew, though they didn't know how, a lot of people knew that it was going to be a limited time. They knew that the char that I was coming in to play a character that was going to, uh, that was going to exist and make an impact and then go. And they kind of, um, they respected that. Yeah. They, they were also like, they really wanted to make sure I had everything I needed. I think Pea Valley has touched so many people. I think season two especially, and everyone's been catching up in season one. There's been something quite special about it. Um, I haven't quite figured out what it is. It's definitely unapologetic. It's real, it's emotional, it's um, conflicting emotionally sometimes, and it's got these big characters that in some way we all relate to. I think I'm kind of answering it for you, but um, what do you think the success is of Pea Valley? Why people have fallen in love with it the way that they have? It comes down to storytelling. It comes down to specific storytelling. Katori is a brave storyteller. Um, she's brave. She will tell the truth, absolutely. And she will tell it from a specific perspective, from her lens. And her lens is just, it's robust with soul. And so when you're moving from that space, like, and you're, and she is also, and I will use this language. She's also um, relentless in pursuit of the truth, Ooh, right? That's, that's amazing. Like and so, like when when you have that, right? You kind of everybody that you bring in is cut of that same cloth. 
intimacy and sex play a really big part in this season um, and I think it's kind of shown in a way that perhaps we haven't always seen. Your character's relationship with a little murder is definitely on the d low, secret, you know, it's kind of forbidden, he's a rapper, you've just come out of prison, so there's all this kind of conflicting stuff going on. I'm wondering for you guys, how did you prepare? Because there was this one really crucial scene between you that was very intimate, but also probably the first time we've seen two men, two black men from a certain background sharing their love with each other on screen. How did you guys kind of get ready for that? It was like, I, I read it and I was like, Ooh, I was like, okay, 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 okay. All right, this is worth having a conversation. So for me, it was, it was, it's always about what is the story, right? And when I had the conversation, when I did the audition and I talked to Katori, I was like, what is your intention with the scene? Like, what are we, like, what are, what are, what are we doing? And she was always very clear that the scene was about intimacy. It was about intimacy, it was about care. It was about a black man, Teague, who is being kind of ravaged by his trauma. And like this, by his internal trauma, by the trauma of the world, by like not fitting in and being displaced. And it's about his, his love and the person, the only other person he's been intimate with, yeah. it's about murder showing up and being caring and compassionate and affectionate and intimate with them in a way that like quells the demons and like makes it like makes him feel uh, safe. And that, that is the scene. And I think that, you know, both Fonz and I, we knew that, we knew that it was special. I read it and I was like, you know, there was part of me that was like, I was moved by it. Yeah. And I was also like, man, that's a mountain to climb. Yeah. I'm like, okay, that's a mountain to climb. And fortunately for me, I was in like the best hands. Our intimacy coordinator was amazing. Um, Fonz is incredible, Katoria is incredible. And on the day, it just, it was just like, okay, let's tell the truth. Which you guys did beautifully. You and JL Fonz, ugh, loved it. This is online again, um, the reaction when you do something so powerful, maybe sometimes for seen for the first time, what's the reaction like? Are people in your DMs, in Instagram, Twitter? Yeah, like, what's it been yeah. like? I, I, like in DMs, in not in DMs, on pictures, you know, in Twitter, in all of these different places. I've had so many black men reach out to me who, who have said they have, they are so grateful because they have not seen themselves and the way that they experience love and affection and intimacy. They have not seen that on television ever. And I felt like that's that's why, that's the reason, that's what it's about, that is it, it's for you. When you do something so powerful, it's always going to polarize for some people who aren't comfortable or ready to see it. And there was a bit of a backlash from some people about this kind of openly, kind of intimate scene between your character and Little Murder. Um, how did that feel like for you to see that when people were being so negative? Interesting because I was so, like Fonz and I, at the end of the day, we were like, we did it, we did it, we got it, we did it. And everybody involved was like, we did it. And then Fonz, you know, because I haven't been on the show before and Fonz has been on the show before, he just was like, you ready? <laughs> yeah. And then he said, uh, before that came out, he just like, um, he said something about, he sent me a text, very kind. It was just like, you know, absorb the love, ignore the hate and very simple. And I was like, cool. I was like, yeah, cool, cool, it's gonna be chill. It's gonna be super chill, it's gonna be super chill. And, you know, that was something that I held on to as the episode was, was released. And you know, I really didn't get to see so much of you know, the, the opinion of, um, what are you doing, all this, this is all this gay sex, and blah, blah, blah. You know, it, I didn't really see so much of that. I saw a little bit of it here and there. And I know that there was a lot of it because it's part of conversations. Then I, in my opinion, you get into the space where it's like, okay, do they, have, does someone have ears to hear? Mm. If, if someone does not have ears to hear, then it, it, it's not, it, that's not the conversation we're having. That said, um, will I stand by and just like allow rhetoric that can be harmful to the people that I am, that Tika's representing, am I gonna just stand by and, and let that rhetoric exist? 
without being checked on my page in my personal space? No, that has to be checked, right? And addressed. Um, in the same token, I'm not going to go to someone that does not have ears to hear and try to convince them. I think that another thing about story that I think is so beautiful and powerful is that now that the scene exists in the world, now that these characters exist in the world, I think some growth and change is immediate. Some growth and change is like a seed to a bud, to a flower, to a tree. We all need a little hair on our laughs. Makes you appreciate the laugh. I'm a classic. Even classic can be finessed. Ain't no use in being the riches in the graveyard.